Hello everyone, it's the Historical Gamer once again, and today we're returning to Cold Waters, a real-time uh, naval simulation game which puts you in the command of a U.S. nuclear submarine during a hypothetical Third World War. Uh, this is part two of a dynamic campaign that we're fighting against the Soviets. In the first part, uh, it was a very short battle, only about 15 minutes. Uh, we <laughs> issued a series of errors which I've never seen before uh, because I'm a klutz on the keyboard. I uh, started going accurately active sonar right at the start of the battle. I then blew my ballast tanks and surfaced all the way to the surface. Well, surfaced all the way to the surface. Wow, that's redundant. Uh, and then fired a snapshot torpedo, which was able to sink an enemy sub, uh, but an enemy patrol aircraft was able to kill us. However, with that being said, we were successful in sinking the enemy sub, which was our objective, and somehow we were picked up and rescued uh, by American or NATO forces. So we were given another submarine uh, to go back to war with, and that is what we're going to do. So we're going to jump back into that campaign. This is the second battle. We're just like two days into the war, uh, and uh, we'll see how things pan out for us. We are still using another Alpha class sub. We are now in the uh, USS Shark, or not Alpha, good lord, those are Russians. We're still in a Skipjack class sub, and that is where we pick up today. So uh, this was taken from a live stream just two days ago, uh, so you know, you'll hear me talking to the audience and things like that. Uh, but I uh, hope you guys enjoy and uh, let me know your thoughts below. All right, let's go. Let's get back into it. Okay. <laughs> here, here we go. Let's try that again. Oh, wait. Why are we still in port? Is this lost ground in West Germany? Okay, so the Soviets are driving in West Germany. So 13 hours in port. Let's unload. Ooh. All right, so four, four noisemakers, 20 torpedoes. Um, let's go ahead and cast off anchors away. So our objective right now is to interdict enemy replenishment vessels, replenishment tankers. Um, so it's now December 1st, so the war's been going for, what, like three days or so? Um, and I'm moving out east to engage enemy warships. Going to try and avoid the enemy submarines and really focus on the enemy warships as best we can. You can see here there's quite a bit of activity in the Barents Sea. Those warships are north in the Greenland Sea. It looks like their subs are kind of patrolling this picket line. We'll duck in here into the Barent. We'll see what we find. Do they know where I am? I feel like that sub is really closing on me. This is probably an engagement with an enemy sub. Um, new sonar contact bearing 191, designate 01. Um, close to 20 kilometers. Go to one third. Rig ship for ultra quiet. All right, let's not let them figure out where we are quite yet. Let's see if we can figure out where they are. First. So no context yet. There's a there's a layer at 172 feet. Near the bottom here too. It's relatively shallow. Alright, there we go. We've got a contact. It's a very weak contact, as you can tell here. Try and identify it. it. Looks an awfully lot like in November. You've got one track here that's very faint, one track here that's very faint, and then two stronger tracks. Here two new sonar contacts here two is cavitating. All this in November. Where's Sierra two? Sierra two's further out. Whoa. Let me 
enemy's active sonar got a ping on us, I think. I like a better solution before I just... They are too faded. That's the one thing that's really difficult with the Soviet subs is they use active sonar a lot. Seems like they get good fixes on you quite frequently. I don't like, you know, I know a lot of people are like, just fire a torpedo and see what happens. I don't really like to do that. I, I prefer to get a good fix on them before you, you shoot at them. at this stage in the campaign, or just in general? The Narwhal was probably quieter than any Soviet sub, for what that's worth. That was as quiet as a Ohio-class boomer, and supposedly those have only ever successfully been tracked a handful of times. Alright, I think 80% is probably good enough. Do this. Fire it. Fire break? Really? That's not a, a crazy angle or anything. Does anybody know when you break the wire on a torpedo, does it instantly go active or does it wait for a bit? Okay. Thanks for that heads up, guys. If that November track is good, it look like he's fired off torpedoes yet. So if that... Oh. So let's go... A come on, I hope this sub's about to go... Or this torpedo's about to go active. Looks like it might collide with the ground. Still just the one torpedo. Still not going active? I think he's got to have gotten to the waypoint by now. Oh, there he is. He's gone active. Definitely acquired the target. So they don't have a time to get anything out. That was really close into the target before it went active. Oh no, don't fall for it. Come on, Mark 48, be smarter than that. Oh, oh, he's coming back in. Get him, get him, get him. Where'd he go? Where'd he go? Really? The November just vanished like that? Like, oh, who knows where he is? I think that's us over here. Okay, so the November's cavitating, but we still can't see it. You'd think our torpedo would home in on the cavitation, right? Oh, is he blowing ballast, maybe? Jumping above the layer? That would be the smart thing to do. I 
I'm just kind of sitting on the bottom right now. I don't have a reason, per se, to... Um, for the individual asking what the layer is, the layer, I'm not a, by any means, scientist or anything, so I can't speak to the details of what the layer is. What I can, uh, what I can tell you is that, in essence, the layer is, there's like a difference of temperature between water at different depths, and, need to come up a bit, and that can cause changes in the way the acoustics work. Oh, right under him. Man, this sub is playing what I normally play. Circle around and get this guy. Come on, Mark 8. Enemy's about to surface, it looks like. Don't be confused. Man, this November is good. Playing like I was last night. Still just the one torpedo in the water, though. I think he's maybe trying to go back under. Come on, you got him, you got him. Or maybe they're just surface so they have an easy time abandoning the boat because they know they're doomed. In any event, boom! Down she goes. November is sunk. Let's come up a little bit. Looks like well, the ground's getting a little bit less shallow here. We'll bring it up to 850. I know there's at least one more sub in the, the area. We'll use our ballast to bring us up a bit. Condemned, you're not a fan of the missile miss missions? Alright, we'll try and level off roughly here. There she is, sunk over there. We're still rigged for extra quiet. We had contact on another enemy sub ahead. There's no other weapons in the water. There are enemy vessels nearby, so we can't leave the area yet. Uh, Patrick, no, you're still limited to, in the 68 campaign, I believe you're limited to the skipjack. Uh, is the sturgeon in there and then the permit, I think? The, the main difference is there's just no LA there. And those ships are earlier versions, so I don't think they have, like, the harpoon, for example. Well, I mean, you may be saying I'm getting better at the game, but I don't know if you saw my first effort. Same campaign. I haven't died yet. My first effort in this uh, campaign was certainly less than impressive. Um, I activated son active sonar and blew my ballast <laughs> and <laughs> rushed to the surface only to get hit by a bear just off the coast of no uh, Norway. Fortunately, I was able to get a torpedo out and sink the whiskey class sub that I was trying to sink that had Russian Spetsnets commandos on it. And I was able to abandon ship and not get captured because we were right next to Norway. 
but it certainly wasn't, uh, I did not cover myself in glory. Exploding battery and leaky pipes, the game isn't quite that detailed. Uh, Party Commissar, I believe there are guided anti-submarine -tor torpedoes in the 68 campaign, but they're very ineffective. They're actually slower than most of the Russian submarines are. Condemned, someone earlier was telling me they are guided. They're just really slow. Okay. Yeah, if I wanted to manually track my torpedoes and use math, then I would play, uh, I'd probably play Silent Hunter. I'm just remaining silent because I know there is another enemy boat nearby. I'm not sure where. We had a contact briefly. Um, but again, I'm not sure where. I don't want to come up too much. Let's maybe bring the, bring the ship up to like 650 and see if we pick anything else up. Not, there's not a ton of ambient noise. 88 decibels means it's, I think, a relatively calm sea above. Oak, I don't think I have towed sonar in this ship. Or in this boat. Boat doesn't come with uh, towed sonar. Oh, does it? I didn't think it did. Oh, shit. Yeah, I don't want to release from Ultra Quiet. Why did I do that? All right, well, let's try uh, turning a bit then to see if maybe we'll be able to pick anything up. All right, all right, I'm working on unmasking the toad array. The toad array is kind of back here, so right now it's behind my propellers, so it's having difficulty detecting anything that I'm going directly toward. Uh, but obviously if I uh, if I turn it a bit, then it's, it's dragging this way, so it can get toward things that were in front of me before. All right, let's level up here. I think we should be unmasked a bit, unless he's kind of gone this way, but I would have thought I would have picked him up then. Um, let's try weaving back for a bit. Hope I'm not making this too slow and boring for anybody watching. I'm uh, trying to be more intelligent with the way I play this time around. And frankly, our mission isn't to sink these subs. Our mission is to find enemy tenders and sink those. So if we, you know, sink them, great. It's good for us, but um, it doesn't really add to our end mission results. So if someone gets away, I don't really care as long as our sub gets away to fight another day. All right, we're going to try and jump above the layer a little bit. He's a 176-foot layer. is a little bit shallow for my taste, but we'll jump above it and see what we can find. We'll level out here. We're still at ultra quiet, so this could take a while for us to climb the required depth, but I want to keep us really quiet so that way if we do jump above, we're not loud and he doesn't detect us the second we poke our heads above. I wish the November would release out of my fire control. I have no desire to look at the thing anymore. Look, I found a bunch of drowning Russian 
Submariners. On the bottom of the sea. Skipjack is kind of old, but isn't that kind of part of the appeal? In my view, it is. I think part of the charm of an older boat is, you know, facing the challenge that you have to face in order to be successful with it. Um, you know, if you've got the brand new shiniest vehicle on the block and, and all of a sudden you're being, you know, you're, you're fighting a war against everything that's older as opposed to, you know, you having a bit of disadvantage, I think it makes it that much more satisfying when you're successful. It's like giving, you know, a, a pilot a B-2 and telling him to bomb the Taliban versus, you know, giving him a, a, a B-52 and telling him to go bomb Hanoi when they had all the, you know, Sams there. Like, sure... In a real war, everyone would want the B-2 bombing the Taliban, but in a game, there's a, a bigger sense of accomplishment bombing a hard target. Um, you guys are talking about the submarines. Just to make you aware, and I know I've mentioned this in previous videos, but um, the the Killerfish team is uh, planning on very shortly releasing Soviet subs as well as a Soviet campaign. So I don't know if they'll all be nuclear for the Russians. The Russians relied much more heavily on diesels than the U.S. did. Um, but uh, worth considering. I do think the 68 campaign would be kind of cool to have, like, the is it the Barbel class, the last U.S. diesel class? which is very similar, in fact, to the Skipjack. It had the teardrop hull, it had a lot of the same, it was built and designed at the same time as the Skipjack, you know, in tandem, except it was a diesel boat. Um, I don't know if you can use the Typhoon in the in the Soviet campaign. I somewhat doubt it. They don't have any boomers on the U.S. side, so I don't. I doubt they're going to go with the boomer approach. Has anybody seen a nuclear war happen? I think I've seen it suggested that it's possible, but I don't know if anyone's actually seen the use of nuclear weapons in the campaign. I'm kind of curious if there's like a trigger that can cause that to happen. I don't see any enemy air, air units here, so that's good. As we kind of head above the, above the layer. Are you making a jab at me for driving five knots there? Cypher, or is that a comment about Russian diesel boats? All right, we're right at the layer. I'm gonna bring it up to around 125 just in case I need a little bit of clearance. And then we'll adjust course to see if we pick anything up. We'll actually level up around 150. I think this is probably enough over the layer to see if we can pick anything up and we'll start maneuvering a bit. I'm, I'm surfacing too slowly for your taste, or surfacing too slowly in a way that will actually hurt me? Still vessels nearby. Oh, apparently you can't abandon ship when you're at a certain depth. That's interesting.
Maybe we'll just do a circle here and see if we pick anything up. Still nothing, huh? When did the first Akulas go into service? The Akulas entered service right as this war would have been occurring, so, uh, you know, it's not crazy that it's not included. Is there anything that being an ultra quiet will prevent me from picking up? Like, will we, will some of our sensors be turned off or anything like that? Would that be why I haven't picked anything up? Uh, I would agree that Akula was the best Soviet sub. I don't think it ever matched up to... Maybe the very, very late versions matched up to some of the early Los Angeles-class subs, but... It's annoying that it doesn't clear out the sub I sank. Nothing. Hmm. No, the November's sunk, dude. So I don't, for whatever reason, the signature keeps your contact there even after it's dead. I don't know if there's a way to clear it out. All right, we just got pinged, I think. Torpedo in the water. Below the layer, though. For sure, that's below the layer. So the enemy fired a torpedo out. I'm firing a moss off to the right. There'll be a simulated submarine here. 
And I think I'm going to drop below the layer. I'm pretty sure that's where the enemy is. Yeah, the enemy the enemy torpedo is not active yet. It is I think it's increasing its uh Wait, that's me. The enemy torpedo is below the layer. It's not active. I I'm going to hope Oops. I'm going to hope that it's just not going to pick me up. Let's see. Got a sub at quiet running, and we've got a, a moss out there. Both are above the layer. The enemy torpedo's below the layer. Though, again, if he's steering it in manually, that could hurt. I don't even know how to deploy a toad array. Can you even retract it in this game? I think you may have. It's hard to tell. Not active. Question is how closely does he steer it in before? I'll stop gambling here. He's right under me. Just the two still. And now he's active. Oh shit, he's acquired for sure. Where the hell is my sub? I can't even see me. Oh, shit. I don't want to cavitate. I'm back below the layer now. 
and that enemy torpedo's going the wrong direction. Getting a good ping off me, but he's going the wrong direction at the moment. We still don't know, we can't hear the enemy sub. The one thing I don't get is, does this enemy torpedo have, like, sonar reader in the back of its head, like an active ping in the back of its head? Because it's past me and it's pinging and still getting, I think, still getting a reading off me? He's going the wrong direction, though. Wish I was in an L.A. class right now. He's going the wrong direction. So. What was that? Something just blew up over there. Oh, it was our moss. Alright, so we're back below the lair. We're rigged for ultra quiet. Keep periodically checking, but it's not, it doesn't appear to be near us. So he's off this direction somewhere. Um, good lord. Meant to dive. We're going the wrong direction, and that's the only torpedo in the water. This is a very crafty, crafty Soviet. I don't think the enemy is above the lair, guys. I popped above the lair. I know he's very quiet. I didn't pick him up. And then when I went active... We saw a torpedo come in at very low depth. That torpedo was very clearly fired from below the layer. Now, it's possible the enemy submarine could have jumped above the layer, but given that I didn't fire a torpedo or do anything to spook him, I think it's unlikely. Period. It's the November I sank already. Over here, this is the contact I have. That's a sunk enemy submarine. I, I don't think the enemy's in November. If he is, he's got to be going like one knot because this guy's quiet as hell. Again, this is not a valid sonar reading. This thing is dead. The game doesn't clear this out. I'm not sure why. It's kind of frustrating, actually. Does anybody know? Is there a way to clear a contact? That's really something I hope they work on, because it's frustrating as hell. It, it, I could see it be very easy to confuse a, a sunk target with a, a, a valid target. I must say, I'm very happy with the way the subtlety worked against that enemy torpedo, though. Rapid, you know, rapidly accelerate, drop noisemaker, turn and dive below the layer, and then get quiet again. Oh, the enemy sub blew, or the enemy sub was what? No, the enemy submarine's torpedo blew up, so the moss is still running. What do you guys think to firing a moss below below the layer? The previous moss we fired was above the layer, and the enemy had a fix on us from our active sonar. 
a fire moss going the other direction, maybe I can lure him out into, into shooting again, and then we can fire a torpedo down the same bearings. I believe the hotkeys are in the manual. I've looked through the manual. There's just a lot of them, and it's kind of hard to remember. I wrote down some of the ones I thought was key, but I must have missed silent running. I will say I did not buy the game, though. I did get it for free as a, as a press copy. Full disclosure. I was going to buy it, and then I got a copy, like, literally right as I was in my checkout aisle. It's one of those things where sometimes you can get free copies, but I didn't want to wait a week after launch. So I was basically going to buy it launch day, and I had asked for a copy, and they said they'd consider it. And, you know, they, they gave me a copy on launch day right as I was about to buy it. Alright. Let's do this. Weapon away. It's going the other direction of me. Just ha the, the main thing is you gotta hope it gets far enough away from the sub before the Russians launch something at him. I mean, I was going to buy the game at the price that it's... Contact, CR2. That's a faint contact. Let's take a look. So far, it hasn't shot anything at us. It is not a Sierra, guys. Those lines do not match up. What do you guys think? Is that an Alpha? Or Alpha's that quiet? Definitely not a Victor 2. Those lines don't match up at all. The Alpha was the only thing that looked... It's got to be an Alpha. It's either that or a Typhoon, and I don't think it's a Boomer. She's an Alpha, boys. For sure. I'll stop. I want to try and get a fix on her. Maybe improve the firing solution if we make less noise.
fine. I don't want to make my toad array useless. I'll stay at one third. Well, it's silent, right? Well, I'm silent running. This little thing up here means I'm at silent. We'll see. So our own ship, according to this, is MF Act of 9. I assume this is signature. Ass of negative 4. Toad is 8. What are these frequencies? Oh, we lost it. Oh, I'm turning the wrong direction, that's why. Turned head on, my sonar just completely lost it. God damn it. Haskell, it has to be an alpha. Based on the signature, the only other thing it could be is a typhoon, and I'm confident there are no typhoons yet. Soviets haven't started losing the war, so they haven't sent them out to sea yet. Is a rough idea of where I am, yes, but again, I've got a moss out there to at least muddy the waters. Was the Alpha the titanium boat? As I am turning, as you can see, I'm turning east. So my toad array should get a look at him shortly. I thought the Alpha was that, like, super expensive, like, Ferrari of, of subs that the Russians only built a handful of. <sighs> I was just trying to give my Toad Array a better look at him, see if he was still there. I'm turning toward him, okay? He's got to be near silent, or near stopped at the moment. All right, guys, I'll close the distance. I'm turning back his way. I have no idea what his bearing was, though. I always trust chat. I'm a very trusting guy. Aye, aye, Tortuga power. Surface the boat, full speed ahead. Making turns for 30 knots. All ahead flank.
think my moss died. Ran out of fuel. I will give the game this, and I know it's no silent hunter or anything. But it does a good job of keeping you in suspense. Fast Attack was a really good game by, um, it was by SSI. Uh, or no, it was Sierra. Um, which was more of a, like a silent hunter type thing where you were a modern sub. You saw just the interior of the sub. You, there was no exterior view. You were in a Los Angeles class boat. And it gave you the sense of, this is really hard because all you see is your sonar lines on a, on a screen and you've got to manage your sub and your torpedoes and all of that without having a good sense of where things are. Obviously, the third-person view in this game makes it much easier to say, all right, well, there's a torpedo coming in literally right here, so I just need to turn this way. You wouldn't necessarily know that in, in a fast attack game, which I would compare more to, like, Silent Hunter. But this game certainly does a good job of giving you the stalking feeling. Like, I think the difficulty with fast attack is I could never really tell, you know, where is the enemy. I, I, it was difficult for me to visualize where the enemy was, how my maneuvering mattered, you know, what I needed to do to successfully evade things or, or detect things. Um, this game does a very good job of that. Oh, regained alpha. Yeah, I mean, the one thing... I guess I prefer not having to like have a really detailed track of my torpedoes. That's why I haven't played the. Uh, um, that's why I haven't played the 68 campaign. Is I really want guided weapons. I'm not an, a math expert. I don't want to look and see how tall is the mast relative to the angle on the bow and whatever. Like I just want to point and shoot. It's easier in a game like this for me. Yeah, that makes me less of a hardcore core core sub sim, but. Depth screen? Where do I check his depth? What's the depth screen? Eye depth? Looks like he's on the floor. It's not the November. This is definitely an alpha. Uh, USS Shark to Russian submarine. USS Shark to Russian submarine. We noticed you're sitting on the floor. Uh, are you having reactor problems? Can we lend you assistance? Wouldn't that be funny if this was actually a bug and he was just sitting on the floor like this? <laughs> the main issue I have is with what with such a low firing solution. I have no level of confidence that he actually is where he appears to be. If I fire and aim here and it goes active, he may well be three kilometers further out and have all the warning and time he needs to get away. That's why the solution percentage is important. I'm not a big fan of snap shooting unless I've got a bearing to fire down. Condemned, is that a bug you've seen before?
Is he moving? I can't tell. All right, well, I'm going to trust you, even though someone told me not to trust chat. But I'm going to go ahead and trust you. We'll fire short. Why did it break? Great. Well, he just went... He just went active. Question is, when they're beached, do they shoot back? He's pinging me, so it's not like he's totally dead. How is that a wide angle for my ship, you guys? Look at where I'm moving. I'm moving this direction. That was maybe 10 to 15 degrees offline of my ship. That is not a wide angle at all. So far, just my torpedo in the water. Well, it's kind of disappointing. I thought this was a really big cat and mouse chase. If it's really a bug, that is a little disappointing. It would be a good tactic and interesting to see the AI do if it wasn't, you know... If it wasn't a bug that just caused him to sit there and not move for the entire game. Like, that kind of just took the enjoyment out of that kill. If he had started maneuvering and attempting to avoid and, you know, giving me the sense that the computer didn't just beat itself, then that would have been a lot more fun. I had been enjoying myself up to that point. Okay, so two enemy subs sunk, nothing left, an alpha and a November. Uh, we still have 18 torpedoes remaining. So certainly no reason to head back. Excellent results, but unfortunately, this was not your mission objective. That's okay. I didn't say I was giving up. Oh, wait. All right, guys, we went rogue there a bit, sinking some enemy submarines and uh, having that little cat and mouse and then sort of lame duck uh, destruction of an enemy alpha sub on the on the ocean floor. But so far, so good. We are two parts in uh, to a, a campaign now, and we have not yet died. We fought two engagements, and we've uh, almost died in the first. Our sub was shot out from underneath us, and the second one, a bit better results, and uh, uh, we'll see how we're able to continue pushing this forward. Hope you guys enjoyed the video, and until next time, guys, this is the Historical Gamer saying thank you for watching, and I'm out.